lots of ghosts chasing Lainey here with episode number 31 of Robin's Revival. And everyone loves surprises, so how about this? A surprise transfer special. Let's hit the intro. So as I said, rather than playing a, the Barnsley game as we advertised on Tuesday, we're actually going to do a transfer special. The reason for that is because I said I was going to do a squad overhaul in January. 40 players have left, 40 players have come in. Felt like if I tried to play a match after that, it would probably be a bit too much. We're not going to do all of the transfers in and out either, because that would also take too long. I'm just going to run you through the highlights, because that feels like the best way to do it. And I think we'll start with the players who have left. So our first big departure of January was Scott McMahon. He joined St Johnston for £1.2 million. We brought him in earlier in the season. He wasn't really getting in the side. So it just felt like we should cash in on him because he's approaching that golden age of 30 where as FM players we have to start putting players out to pasture. It's just the law. No one really knows why. But yeah, it's it was time for him to go. We got a good profit on him. I think we signed him for nothing. We signed him for very little. We signed him for nothing from Dundee with Dundee United, I should say. Played 10 games, wasn't spectacular. 1 million rising to 1.2. It's a good deal for him. I also sold Charlie White to Sunderland for £225,000. He goes back to the North East, having previously played there several seasons ago in game time. I think six or seven seasons ago in game time. But again, another player who was just kind of warming the bench for us, and I didn't think keeping around was smart. I thought getting money for him at 32 Probably the wisest thing we could do. So that's what we've done. And he's now out the door as well. Chris Long has joined Wrexham for just over £9,000. Again, he wasn't really playing. He spent more time on loan than he had actually in the side. Again, approaching 30. Didn't think he had a long-term future at this level. So he had to move on. The biggest out of the window was Mark Helm. £4.7 million to LA Galaxy. He was getting good game time for us. He was a first team regular, but as I think I said in the last episode, it was becoming more and more apparent to me he wasn't actually going to be much more than decent at championship level. I think he was sort of close to reaching his peak already. It felt like he didn't have a lot of room to develop. I know he's played for us a lot. I know he's played for us well as well, which is probably why he's going to be the biggest adjustment of the people we've let go to figure out a way around, but... 4.7 million was really too good to turn down for a guy I spent 400k on, quite frankly. Another summer signing who never really made it into the side was Daniel Cleary. He's gone to Derry City for £100,000, could rise to 125 He again, he, he was a player I signed because I thought he would make something of himself in the first team and he was never quite good enough to get in it, so I'm just cutting my losses with him, really. I say cutting my losses because actually I have made a loss this time, 175 k Probably more of a loss than I wanted to make on a player like that, but, you know, you live, you learn. Very unusual, this is one of our youngsters actually, came through our youth team, Franz Josef Buhler. He's gone to Europa FC in Gibraltar for £10,000. He was never going to get in our first team, I was quite surprised they were willing to pay us money for him, but they did, so I took it. We've also sent Charlie Dennis back to the States, gone to San Antonio for £170,000. For a guy we signed for free, actually, we've made quite a bit of money on him in terms of both he set a couple of loans out where they actually paid for him back to the US, and now he's gone full-time back to the US. Everything has been profit. He played 11 games for us. He played quite well in those 11 games for us, but he was never going to be a championship player, so it was just it was time for him to go back to the States, do what he does best, playing in the USL, and just, you know, having a good time out there, I guess. Another youth team moved on for money was Lenny Collins. He has actually played our game for us this season, because I didn't having him else I had faith in on the right wing, but 20k for him for a player who realistically we're not looking at pulling up any trees here. So we let him go, we let him go, we took money. We also saw Gerardo Bajrami to Wrexham for £26,500, a huge loss on him. He looked like a much better player before we signed him than afterwards. Wrexham now, by the way, are in League 2, 
I think League 2 is probably a level where this guy's going to do really well. So I'm actually, I think that's good business for everyone involved. Another summer mistake with Jack Gurr, I just let him go to Hamilton for nothing. He was never going to get our first team, so I just let him move on. And the final departure of money was Dominic Ravan. He's been with us for a couple of years now, and he never really liked breaking into the side. He's had a couple of loans out. He's been fairly mediocre in those loans as well. So he signed for us for free. We got 200k from Blackpool for him. And League One really is much more his level. He played for us regularly in League One when we first signed him, but League One is definitely his level. He's not a championship player and probably never will be. But let's have a look at who's coming to replace these guys. I'm just, again, just going to do the headline signing because I've signed a lot of a lot of the 40 players I've signed are youngsters. So they're not for this season. I will just introduce them as they come into the side. But I feel like we need to at least meet the ones who will play fairly regularly for us. And the first of those is actually a young player, but also for the future. He kind of fits in both camps in that he's going to be a very, very, very good player. He's probably only going to play occasionally sparingly off the bench for us this season. It's Francisco Elias. He comes to us from Fortaleza, I believe that is, in Brazilian, the Brazilian First Division. He's actually played quite a lot of football in Brazil. I think that's Brazil's top flight. I think it's, I think it starts... The seal said Syria, ah, Syria B, I'd have a way better idea. Let's have a little look. Is there a division above this? No. So he has played top flight football in Brazil. He came to us for nothing. I got him on a free. And he looks like he could be a very, very good championship player in a couple of years. Can play at right back, can play in midfield. We like that kind of versatility in a 19 year old. If we can keep him around, maybe we build something around him. Also on a free from Fortaleza in Brazil was another 19 year old. under 20 international for Brazil as well. Bismarck, again, as I said, coming for free, has been playing regularly at that top level in Brazil, which is about as good as the championship. He's already played our game for us in the championship off the bench as well. And I think this is our kind of long-term key centre-back. I think he's our big guy going forward as a centre-half. I also went to Barnsley for Rommel Palmer for £275,000. He is a deep-lying playmaker who can also do the attacking midfield thing as an advanced playmaker. Or he can drop further back, this is that versatility. He's kind of like a younger Stefan Johansson. I like that. He's 26 years old. He's coming for a fairly good fee for a player at this level. He has got experience, I believe, in the Championship. Lots of experience in the Championship. He's been playing for Barnes and Alpha ever in the Championship. And been decent. And I think if we can put the right team around him, maybe he's earned in something very special. A player who came in that I immediately loaned out was Idris Odutayo. He is Nigerian. Came in from Fulham for half a million pounds. He wasn't quite ready for first team football, so I thought I'd give him a year on loan. He's gone to Aqua United in Nigeria on loan. I think he just needs a year of playing first team football, or six months of first team football. He'll come back much better and he'll be a really key player in the squad. But for now, definitely someone to keep an eye on. In fact, I may even try converting him to a midfielder, because now I'm looking at him, he might actually have better stats as a centre midfielder than he does as a defender, which is curious. I also spent £20,500 on Bobby Carroll, again one to develop for the future rather than being one to keep for now. At 23 maybe he's peaked already, maybe he's not going to quite reach his potential, but I feel like he's got the work rate and determination to kind of put the graft in and get there. I want to send him on loan, I want to see what happens. Again, cost me nothing, £20,000 from Sheffield United, well worth a pun on this kid. I've also made a few loan signings. The first of those was Brendan Land on loan from Leicester. He is a right winger slash right. Very much in that kind of Kane Kessler Hayden role, actually, that we had for so many years successfully. I don't know if we can keep him permanently. He's England, England under 19 international, but he has been playing for us. He's been playing pretty well for us. He hasn't quite broken into Leicester's squad yet, but I think maybe we can have him on loan this season and for next season, maybe. Either we'll be able to be in a position to buy him, negotiate a really good fee for him, or we'll be in a position to at least hand him back to Leicester as a first team player, which is a very interesting place for him to be in his career. Another channel favourite return, so our Max O'Leary has been signed from Bristol City, just like I did at Sunderland, actually the season went into the Premier League, don't take that as an omen. He's immediately become our first choice keeper, he is playing very, very well, he is a very accomplished championship stopper, Okay, he comes from Bristol City. We'll, we'll let him off. He's very much good enough for this level and very, very good for this level. And I think that's kind of what we need right now. 
especially between the sticks where we've been hemorrhaging goals a little bit. Now from Sheffield Wednesday I signed Dennis Adener Adeneran? We'll go with Ad Adeneran. I'll figure it out. Anyway, he's a very quick centre midfielder. He's a ball winner. He can do deep line playmaker as well. He kind of gives us that foil next to Stefan Johansson, where Palmer was a younger kind of more or less carbon copy Stefan Johansson. And then around kind of the player you want alongside him. And I think those two go forward really big for us for at least two or three years now. Because they're both 26. They're both kind of coming to the peak of their career. But if they can form a good partnership, they've got some potential. And Stefan Johansson is probably only going to play for another year at best. So it really is a good time to get these guys in and see what we can do with them. Another loan was Cobby Mainu, who's coming from Manchester United. He's an under-20 international for England. Plays on the left-hand side primarily for it, but he can play everywhere in midfield. Very useful player to have around. A big potential guy. I don't think we're going to sign him permanently. I tried, and they weren't willing to do any business for him, sadly. But we've managed to get in for at least the rest of this season. Spent last season on Leighton Orient as well. We'll see what he does. We'll see what he does. I've got big... Big hopes for him, at least for the rest of the season, but long term maybe as well, someone we can keep around. Also on loan for Man United is Christ Shibua Bua from the Congo. Uh, he is an under-23 international for them, can play as a centre-half, a central midfielder or a central attacking midfielder. Very interesting com combination of skills. He's a natural libero as well, which isn't a role I've used, but is a role I could potentially find a use for if I need to change things up tactically. Again, don't know how much longer he's going to stay around beyond this season, but we'll see. We'll see if he's a guy we can keep around to develop with the rest of the team. I also need more firepower up front. That's been a real issue with scoring goals this season. And Ashley Fletcher, £57,000 from QPR, fits that role perfectly. It says he's a winger, but he is actually the pressing forward I like using. And he's very, very good at doing it. In terms of his like past career... He's never been a prolific goal scorer. He had one double-figure season in the Championship, but he's played for a lot of clubs, Middlesbrough, Sunderland, West Ham, everywhere, really, and never really seemed to find a goal-scoring rhythm. He's had a goal in his first two games for us. I have a history, those who are new around the channel know, of taking players who don't look like prolific goal scorers and making them into them. I don't know if Ashley Fletcher is that guy, but if he is, that'll be a real, real bargain. Because he's quick. If we can find the net regularly, we could have absolutely something special on our hands with this guy. Another area we had issues in was at right back. Because Odemayo, as much as he's been great for us, is not a right back. He is a centre half who I've been shoehorning in at right back. Cyrus Christie, an Irish international, 32 years old, signed from Birmingham for £300,000. Some might argue it's too much to pay for him. I don't think it is. I think he's a pretty good right back for this level. Definitely the best right back in the squad. Probably a bit of a bargain, if I'm honest. And yeah, he's 32. He might only have a year, two years tops left in him. But it does solve that right back problem to some extent. And just in case Christie doesn't, we've also got Dominic Ballin, who's a guy I've managed many times on FM. And I'm starting to think, actually, that I might have to do next year's save as far from England as possible, because I feel like I'm doing, using the same names every year. Either way, Dominic Ball has come in, central midfielder, right back, defensive midfielder, product of Spurs' academy, cost me £210,000, and he's played championship football for QPR. Okay, he's been, play, play, been playing for Mansfield for a few years, which I don't fully understand. But he's played championship football, he's played for Rangers, he played for Rotherham in the championship, he played for Aberdeen in the Scottish Premier League. He has got experience at this sort of level and I think he is a good, good, solid signing going forward. We also brought in Rafael, another under-20 international centre-half for Brazil, on a free. Cost me, like I said, nothing from Vasco da Gama. I'm assuming that's got to be Vasco da Gama. He was playing for Vasco, who are one of the bigger sides in Brazil as well. And, again, 18 years old. Lots are into it. He's already worth £4 million, and we haven't even played him yet, because he's at the South American Under-21 Championship. But a freebie. A good freebie for us. And 
I think we're going to sell him on for a lot of money in a couple of seasons' time. I was signed Evaldo Marul. He is a central midfielder, left-sided midfielder, another under-20 Brazil international, worth a lot of money already, lots of room to develop. I need to make him quicker. That's going to be a big part of his development plan is I need to make him quicker because he doesn't have winger pace right now, which is a bit of an issue. But Costas Nath came from Red Bull Brazil, who, you know, the Red Bull franchise, and he's been playing again top flight football in Brazil, and he cost me nothing. I can't argue with that at all. I said if I can get him on the on some kind of, I don't know why he's on agility and balance. That doesn't make sense. Let's get him on quickness because that's a way better idea. Whilst we're developing players, and let's actually teach him to be an attacking inverted winger. Get his pace up. Good stuff. Work on that. Make him a better player. That's what we're looking for. And another, another Brazil. So, so many Brazilian twenty internationals that apparently it's illegal. Um, I've signed so many Brazilian twenty internationals in this window. It feels ridiculous. I was literally just scouting the other twenty. These guys can't recommend it. They came or recommended with contracts running out, which is why he's come, this guy's coming from Internacional or Brazil. On a free, again, been playing top flight football in Brazil, left back, quick enough, will get quicker, will develop, will become a better player. I've actually got the foundation of a really good defence, and they all seem to be Brazilian, which is ridiculous at this point. And we're going to round things off with two very much for the future signings, but ones I wanted to make you aware of because I feel like they are going to get some football down the line for us in the near future. One is Carlos Borges who is a Portuguese under-20 international. We've signed him from Manchester City. He cost me absolutely nothing. He's had a year in League 2 with Walsall, and he's already worth a fortune. And of our coaches that we believed, he's got at least championship ability. We'll see if he goes further than that, but he's one of our two big prospects for the future. Another quick winger, something very special, something we can definitely make use of. And finally, our big prospect in central midfield, who's going to go out on loan because he didn't get a work permit, but we'll get him somewhere to go for a work permit. He's a Romanian under-21 international. I don't think it'd be long before he's a Romanian first team, full international, actually, because he's already developing ridiculously well. And I think a loan probably will take him very quickly up some levels. The central midfielder, he's come in. He's cost me absolutely nothing. He was on a free. He was just sat... Again, I had a little look. This is a bit of a bit of a pro tip. Look through the under twenty squad, see if anyone pops up looking good, and scout the hell out of them. That's where you find this guy. Worked out well. And so with that, we've kind of rounded up all of our all of our transfers for the window. It was uh, very hectic, very in, very out as well. There wasn't an episode yesterday because I was doing a lot of business. It took a while to get through that window. We'll come back tomorrow though with this Barnsley game. I absolutely guarantee that. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you for watching. I have, as always, been Chasing Lamely. Until next time, I shall, I shall see you very soon. Like, subscribe, you know the deal. Whatever. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys.